Hello everyone and welcome back for part two of our sunken forest design lab. Like in previous episodes, we're just going to be taking a look at some of the thumbnails that you guys created and then we're going to be voting in the comments below as to which one we would like to see developed into a more finished concept. But unlike in previous episodes, this time I have selected 10 thumbnails for us to vote on and I think this will give me a much greater opportunity to discuss why I like a thumbnail or why I think it's interesting and I won't feel as rushed to try to get through, you know, a hundred different thumbnails. Uh, so hopefully this will work out a little better. Uh, so the nice thing about our little thread on conceptart.org where everyone submitted things is that we can just go back there and talk about all the different designs and really discuss things. And um, it's a lot nicer and I hope people continue to kind of enjoy that approach to these design labs having a thread on concept art. And once again, if you haven't seen the thread, I will post a link in the description below just so you can stop by and see all the different design ideas that people came up with uh, because there's a lot of great art there. Uh, but anyway, I picked 10 designs and I didn't pick them based on the quality of art. Like I like to say, um, it's not the art that I'm looking for. It's mostly the design idea. Uh, I don't want you to feel like you have to render something, you know, out nicely for the design to be taken, you know, seriously. Uh, you can still keep things rough, keep things loose. You know, it's not a it's not a contest of who could render the best. It's just coming up with ideas, that brainstorming process that's really important in this kind of middle stage of creating a design. Uh, so I think that's about all I have to say and without further ado I'm just gonna jump right in these are my 10 designs I picked in no particular order uh, so first up we have this uh, design by Hans Rahm I hopefully said that right uh, but a lot of the designs were based on you know underwater you know scenes of like a forest or you know just really underwater stuff uh, which is definitely fine, you know, sunken forest, that's probably the first thing you might think of is uh, just an underwater, um, you know, kind of landscape. And that's certainly what I thought of too, uh, in my head. Uh, but I like this one by Hans Rahm because it has, you know, both it has an interesting focal point, it has some movement in life, you know, you can see there's, say, fish swimming around, and there's definitely a tree structure here, so it captures that foresty feel, and it also captures that underwater sunken feel, and, you know, a, a hard thing when you're doing underwater stuff is to have a reason to provide some lighting or color because obviously you're underwater there's you're not getting a strong lighting source uh, but it looks like Hans Rahm went with some kind of bioluminescent kind of structures I don't know if these are plant life or animal life but there's these nice little point <laughs> there's these nice little pink uh, highlights here of you know light that are being projected probably through you know bioluminescent type stuff uh, so that's that's kind of why I picked this one and also the compositions, you know, interesting enough There's obviously a main focal point your eye kind of gets let in there and the fish or whatever these creatures are help lead your eye in there and uh, Just some of the originality with the pink highlights and things like that Hans Rahm also had some other great thumbnails that were based around very similar concepts using these uh, grayscale with pink highlights, so good job on him uh, next up is this piece by Blues and Blues had probably I would say the strongest selection of thumbnails um, mainly on artistic quality his colors were really good and his ideas were good as well so it was it was hard to pick just one uh, but I think this one was stood out to me as being the most unlike any thing that anyone else was doing and so as I kind of picture it in my head I'm not sure if this is exactly what he was going for uh, but it's like we're in some kind of canyon or uh, you know obviously an area that's that's really kind of I don't know sunken into the ground a lot but yeah I would say it's like a canyon something deep and you could see there's like these giant tree structures uh, that I don't know I could just pretend that they are completely massive you know larger than skyscrapers and and they just go even deeper into the ground as maybe this canyon has multiple layers of depth so maybe there's like these walls of you know canyons here maybe there's more canyons that go you know deeper 
Um, so, but his color choice was actually very good as well. It kind of captures what he was going for. Just mainly brown colors, but just the way he did it. Um, and there's a lot of depth zone with, you know, obviously things get lighter in the distance. And a lot of you guys are actually doing a really good job with that type of stuff, showing uh, atmosphere and distance in your art, you know, using uh, lightening, <laughs> using light and uh, values and uh, hues to really push things back into the distance and having foreground objects that are obviously darker um, and have more value and hues to them. Uh, so you guys are doing a great job with that. Um, and I think Blues is obviously a very talented person, so I don't need to explain that to him. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was definitely an interesting thing. And there weren't that many um, designs that looked quite like that. So anyway, that's why I picked that one. Let's move right along. We got this piece by Yip Lee. And this is in black and white. It doesn't have to be in color, but you can see what he's going for, mainly because uh, there's like these characters here. And he did a good job with just quick gestures to make these, these two characters look like they're underwater and floating. You can definitely tell, oh, okay, this is an underwater scene. Uh, without these characters, it would probably just look like maybe a foggy forest maybe some runes in the background. But when you add these characters and just some of the little details, it's suddenly, okay, I can see this as underwater. Uh, so good job by him. You can see there's just some textures thrown about and obviously done really fast, which I like to see, just kind of getting those ideas out there. Um, I would say the one thing I might change is maybe this feels a bit too much like a castle environment. I don't know. You know, there can definitely be some runes thrown in, but you still want it to feel like it's capturing the, the idea that is a sunken forest. So maybe more trees just scattered around. Uh, but that's definitely things that could be changed in the end. Uh, but I like the fact that the trees uh, seem dead. A lot of people went for, you know, the bushy trees like I did, you know, a lot of leaves and things, but, you know, sunken underwater trees, sometimes maybe they'll, they've been around for a long time. Maybe there's no leaves. Maybe they're petrified and just, you know, branches of dead trees. And <laughs> I don't know what I was saying with that. Uh, but yeah, I, I like this one. It's got a nice little composition and he uses these characters to kind of tell a story. So that's one good thing to do with characters is you're not only just using them to give scale, which is one of the main reasons we put in figures and environments, uh, but you use them to kind of draw the eye into a storyline. So maybe you picture these guys and they're going on an adventure, obviously, and maybe they got little spears, maybe they're going hunting, adventuring, I don't know, but you know, it just kind of lets your mind think about it a bit more. Uh, and they obviously have a destination too. So that kind of completes the story. You have a very clear story arc of people coming in, exploring, going to a certain area. Uh, so that's why I picked that one. And let's move right along. There's definitely a lot more to get through, even though there's just 10. Uh, here is one by Tom Kolbeek. And there are actually a lot of different entries that did the um, effect of having the camera or our viewpoint be half above water and half below, which is definitely a interesting or you know maybe a solid way of being able to show okay this is obviously a foresty type scene you can see that above the water uh, but if you look below the water you can see a lot of interesting stuff too so once again like the a couple of the previous ones we have a character here uh, which kind of helps us you know get, get a sense of scale and also draws us into the to the environment we can relate to it a little bit and there's also some bioluminescent type structures under the water, which once again, it's it's nice to be able to give something underwater just so you have something interesting to look at. I don't know, you know, how realistic it is to always have these, you know, bioluminescent things. Uh, but for the purposes of art, we need we need something, some source of light, something to make the underwater scene, you know, a little more interesting. Uh, so there's definitely framed well. There's a lot of foresty stuff, you know, up top. And the muddy waters down below are also nice. Um, and I guess I should mention something that I was thinking about. And that is, you know, how kind of tough it can be to really break out this concept of a sunken forest away from things that just look like a swamp or, say, a, like a a jungle river which is what I thought uh, a lot of the little the quick little thumbnails I did in the first video kind of looked like a more of a jungle river you know because you couldn't see below the water it was just kind of you were looking at the top of the water 
And in fact, if you just cut off this whole bottom part here and just looked at the very top, it might just look like a, a river that's flowing through like a jungly area. And you don't really get the impression that the trees go down, down into the water and that this place is sunken. It just looks like, you know, maybe there's like a little bit of water, like a river. Uh, but this way, you can see under the water too, you know, it helps sell that idea of a sunken forest and it feels more like a interesting and unique environment. Uh, so this piece by Tom Kolbeek, Kolbeek had a lot of interesting colors. So yeah, I thought it was really nice to look at. Uh, okay, next up, we're gonna have this piece by Duchamp42. Now this piece, obviously the, the composition, the color, or you know, just kind of the artistic quality isn't as high as most of the other ones, especially, you know, compositionally, it's just a lot of white empty space, uh, but you can kind of tell he was going for like some futuristic environment. Uh, but the reason I picked this wasn't for the artistic qualities, uh, but really for just the design ideas, because it made me think of these, you know, interesting idea he was going for, which I didn't see in really in anyone else's piece, uh, which is, I would say maybe there's like a cityscape or, you know, just something. I wouldn't leave it white if I was to redo it, uh, but just, you know, kind of a city that's kind of built atop, you know, maybe kind of a platformy type structure or just something but maybe they have these like sunken forests under the city itself and maybe you know it has like these little outlets of water and things like that and you can just i can picture it in my head of like these these sewers that are just kind of leading out into these big forests that are kind of hidden underneath the the city maybe it's a more a rustic looking city and probably bring in some more you know oranges and really like scrapyard type uh elements to the colors of the city itself uh, but then have these these nice big forests that are just kind of hidden underneath things and and perhaps maybe these are like their sources for for oxygen you can say they have these everywhere and they just maybe they pipe all their carbon dioxide you know emissions down into these forests and the plants grow and then they produce oxygen which comes back into the cities themselves and you know it just seemed like an interesting idea and I didn't see anything quite like it in the other designs so I thought it was definitely one that I wanted to you know share with everyone and say okay look it doesn't have to be amazing artistic quality but it can still be a great design and an interesting idea that will make you think about you know where you can take this idea uh so thanks for dchamp42 for submitting some thumbnails and next up we have a thumbnail by uh wuggy wuggy and what is I, I feel awkward saying that name wuggy uh but anyway it's kind of uh, a lot, a very traditional take on what I was thinking of when I mentioned Sunken Forest. And in fact, there are a lot of pieces that are kind of in a similar vein where you have obviously just trees, you know, underwater. So there were a lot of small variations on this. Some people had like, you know, obviously sea animals were a good way to show that it was underwater. Uh, Wuggy went with some uh, bubbles just to kind of show that you were underwater. Uh, but I liked this one just because it had a very, very basic sense of depth. You know, you can really tell that things get, you know, pushed into the background. There's a lot of trees just going on for who knows how long. Uh, but the main thing that I think set this one apart from other very similar uh, kind of designs was that he um, was smart enough to kind of put the trees in a slight perspective. So anytime you're looking up at something, you want to go for that slight just perspective, you know, curving angle. So you can see this tree on the left kind of, you know, as it goes up into the up um, away from the viewer, it kind of goes, you know, back into a vanishing point and all the trees kind of follow that same one. So the trees on the right kind of go up there as opposed to everything just being vertical because that kind of looks a bit um, more boring. It doesn't have the same, you know, kind of dynamics to it that this one does. Uh, so anyway, I think that's about it for that one. So up next, we are going to have this piece by Undercurrent. And once again, it's a very simple piece, very simple thumbnail. Uh, the the concept is speaking more than, you know, the maybe the, you know, uh, composition and things like that. Although the composition is very straightforward. I would probably lose at least the size of this character. I don't even know if I'd include a character here. Uh, I find it just a bit distracting. It doesn't really do anything to me for like an environmental purpose. Uh, so maybe just ignore the character. 
Uh, but obviously there's foreground element, midground element, and then, you know, background element. So it's just kind of th those basic compositional environmental things. And obviously it's, it's kind of framed slightly. Uh, maybe there could be, you know, ways to gradient out the sides and, you know, make it really focal. Uh, but anyway, the main reason I picked this one, because I kind of pictured it like there was a valley and maybe there used to be, you know, a, a, civilization, a civilization of, you know, advanced people that had these skyrise buildings and all this fanciness. And you can look at this like a post-apocalyptic, God, I can't speak right now, a post-apocalyptic environment. So you have maybe all these skyscrapers that are just torn down to their bare skeleton. You know, there's just really worn out. Um, just remnants of a civilization and the forest has pretty much just completely overtaken the whole you know ground level maybe this is like a hundred feet up and all you're seeing is like the tops of you know old skyscrapers old buildings um, but you're overlooking it from a valley so this has the feeling that it's just you know maybe structured inside a, in a inside a valley like a lot of our you know current societies are uh, so I just thought that was interesting because I didn't I didn't notice any that were quite like that just in their simplicity of having a, a forest just in the in that kind of post-apocalyptic environment type thing. Um, but yeah, those were good. Uh, so anyway, let's move right along. And this was a lovely piece by Blackmire, and um, there were also you know a handful of environments that handled the sunken forest as it was say in a cave it's not really underwater it just has to deal with say being in a cave or some kind of you know underground structure uh, so Blackmire did a few thumbnails and the colors are just you know kind of really wonderful you can obviously see things are very rough yet very readable so that's always a great thing to look for in a thumbnail where it doesn't look like it took much time yet you can still kind of just quickly glance at it and get a great idea of what's going on so he he did a great job with the composition you can see your eyes just kind of goes back maybe it follows this little trickling of water like a little a little tiny baby river uh, back into this cave entrance maybe the entrance is out there and you can see the light just kind of coming in around the corner of the cave uh, but you can see there's definitely these forest trees that just kind of are popping up everywhere. And I don't know. I don't know if the flower is feels slightly big. I might make the... I don't know. I might do something to show scale because it's kind of hard to say how big this could be. Because obviously there's a flower here. It's a certain size. You go back into the distance and these trees might actually read as being kind of small so you know th there's a way to make this look more grand and large uh, that'd be that'd be fun um but otherwise you know it's just a great looking you know environment good job with color it's very vibrant very lively yet it goes back and you can see you lose that vibrance as you go back into the distance so just quickly glancing at the thumbnail it just has a great sense sense of depth and it just feels you know like you can explore it for ages uh, so Blackmire once again great thumbnails very interesting stuff to look at great colors and I think that's about it for why I picked that one and next up we're gonna have Mire I don't know quite how to say that name it's funny because you wrote your name forever ranged I don't know on, on concept art but then you say just call me Mir Mire and that doesn't really help me either because I don't know how to pronounce either one. But anyway, um, this one was interesting, I thought, because it kind of took a very fantasy approach. And you can look at the thumbnail and it's even though it's just black and white, you can see up at the top a water line. So you can see maybe we're, I don't know, like 30 feet underwater. And the, the ground, the forest ground and the trees just kind of go up and grow, you know, out of the water. Uh, but you also have this very fantasy-like character, and there appears to be like a house-type structure here in one of these giant trees that's underwater. Uh, so that was, you know, enough to make me go, oh, okay, this is really interesting. It, it definitely tells the story. It promotes this kind of fantasy world that you can just kind of populate in your mind the second you see this thumbnail. So obviously there's a person here, maybe they live in this uh, little house. Maybe they have their weird little, you know, fantasy source of lighting that's underwater. And they're just kind of floating around. They live underwater. They go into their house. That's where they live. And it just kind of feels very, I don't know, lively, very, very happy, very kind of 
just interesting. It makes you makes you feel good just to see like a nice little story, a nice little fantasy environment uh, that definitely captures the idea of a sunken forest as well. Uh, so good job there, definitely. Good job with your values too to show that this was really a light source. Uh, maybe, yeah. I don't. I don't really have anything negative to say. Just just good job all around. It's it's a fun looking piece. Uh, so. Next up, and I think this will be our final one. So this is going to be number 10. Um, and once again, you can vote for these just by mentioning the name of the person. Don't try to mention numbers or anything like that. Just say which person. That's why I wrote their names nice and big so you can know what to call people. Um, but here's a piece by Marker Inc. And you can see that this one is, you know, once again, just kind of a, a standard approach on what a sunken forest might be. There's obviously trees that go underwater and it has an underwater view of things and maybe you can even you know hint at what's above the water but it would obviously be blurry you wouldn't be able to see it well but i feel like there's potential there um, to show the trees going up above and there's also some green you know lily pads and things like this and there were there were a few entries that looked you know similar to this with lily pads and things like that even mine had some lily pads uh, but I thought this one just kind of encapsulated that idea in a really basic and straightforward way. And, you know, maybe in the 10 I picked, I needed one that at least, you know, had all of these elements. Uh, so you can see, maybe it could have been widescreen just to really sell it, you know, on that kind of scenic movie feel. But that's okay. It's kind of got that 4 by 3 old TV feel to it. Um, and it's nice and rough, but the colors are, are really, you know simple they're subdued but they work and it just you know does a good job of showing an underwater environment that feels like a forest or at least feels like you know part of a forest obviously some people went for the approach of just you know having the bottoms of trees uh, submerged in water and some people went for entire forests submerged in water uh, but all of these were interesting and all of the ones that you know had nothing to do with water were interesting as well so you guys did a good job of giving a nice amount of variety um but anyway yeah marker ink he did a just nice kind of straightforward one it's very pretty to look at and i'm quite happy with all the entries really uh so i think that's about it uh, yeah, that's it for the thumbnails. So I picked those 10. I thought they represented a good cross-section of variety and of different ideas, as well as just, you know, different colors, different compositions, and, you know, anything that might be useful in helping you guys make the choice of what you would like to see developed into a more finished painting. Now, hopefully, you know, all of these thumbnails and uh, people that made them can develop their own ideas and maybe they'll share some of their finished uh, environments if they feel like making them in the thread we created because I would love to look at them. I'm, I'm really enjoying a lot of these thumbnails and it's amazing the ones that I didn't get to pick because there were just so many amazing kind of pieces of art in there. You know, I didn't pick some um, that, you know, really had great artistic quality, but maybe I just didn't feel like they captured the idea enough or you know actually a lot of them did but I just had you know obviously was limited to 10 so I just you know had to make those hard choices but definitely go by the thread and check out the other entries as well um, there were a couple that I didn't pick um, simply because I felt like they were too focused on maybe a creature or something that didn't make the forest the main focal point. Maybe they would have been better for like a creature that was like an underwater forest creature, or, you know, something like that. Uh, but, you know, overall, just really great stuff. And I thank everyone for participating. And hopefully next time we get the same amount of amazing participation. So once again, just vote in the comments below. Tell me what you like the most. And I think that's about it. So thanks for watching. Thanks for participating. And thanks for being awesome.